Hey everybody, uh, so I have been meaning to paint up my sepulchral guard for a long time. Um, I kind of like, I always have something that I like have been meaning to paint and then there's like something that kind of like gets in the way like triage, like there's always something that needs to be done like before that. Um, so these guys, um, <clears throat> they're hanging out in my pile of shame in a drawer, like painted up, primed, uh, Zenthal prime ready to go, and just, you know, waiting to be painted. But I, I wanted to do um, Frost Grave, uh, I'm doing Dark Alchemy and I need a lot more skeletons for um, Skeleton Run. And uh, the only skeletons that I had in my collection were like these ones that I painted up a long time ago for like a very specific kind of Egyptian themed like necromancer D&D campaign. So uh, I do have like flaming skeletons, which are perfect for, for uh, skeleton run. But, uh, but yeah, I've been meaning to paint these guys up. I want to use them for Warcry. I want to use them for D&D. I want to use them for Frostgrave. And they're just like the coolest skeletons. Like I, it's coolest skeleton minis I think I've ever seen. You know, definitely up there, like either number one or like number two in my top five. So um, yeah, I, I did these guys pretty quick. Um, only a few hours, so I'm calling it a speed paint. It's a little bit complicated paint job. It's a little bit longer of a video. I'm trying to edit these guys down. I did a super cut. I'm not going to ramble the whole time. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get into the painting. So first up, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start mixing up some colors on the wet palette. And uh, I'm going to mix up some uh, browns to, uh, to white. These guys, their, their base coat is going to be mostly uh, like brownish color. So um, I'm using a few model color um, paints. I'm using uh, wood grain, uh, Iroquois Iroqu Iroqu sand, and uh, cold white. And then also I'm going to be using a little bit of uh, Game Ink Sepia. The model color range is uh, not quite as opaque. It's a little bit more um, translucent than say like Game Color or definitely they're extra opaque. And the Game Inks are going to be the least opaque and the least heavy body. So they, they kind of scale up and you're going to see me uh, at first I'm going to be using a lot of washes. I'm going to be using like the inks and the uh, model color and it's already kind of like it almost um, waters it down just by being on the wet palette. Like the wet palette, the, the paint will kind of soak up some water from the wet palette just through osmosis. That's, that's how it, you know, keeps it keeps the paints um, wet so that they don't dry out while you're painting and you can, you know, blend your colors together and um, set up a palette and know that it's not going to dry out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to do some sketching on these guys. Um, they've already been Xenithal primed and um, I'm not going to go into Zenithal priming, you know, I've, um, I've done videos where I go through every single step of my paint job and then uh, I've, uh, I've done videos talking specifically about Zenithal priming and how to set up your guys for their best paint job and things like that. So, but the, what I'm doing is I'm using the, um, I'm using that, that prime paint job um, with the, uh, the top down the airbrush kind of grayscale to tell me where all of my lights and darks belong. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of wash over these guys, um, mostly with the, the sepia game ink first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in my highlights. Uh, I'm gonna work all the way up to the white, but I'm gonna start with the, uh, the darkest colors first and then I'm gonna work my way up to the white, the, the white. And the whole time I'm just gonna be using that airbrush um, layer to just show me um, where all of my lights and shadows belong. 
and um, give me some nice natural blends and tones. So when I get up to my kind of top highlights, that's gonna be the part where I'm like the most sparing. Um, just putting on just very, very little bits of color and just kind of sketching on there and um, letting, uh, letting it blend together and stuff, but being very sparing with those um, highest highlights. But this is um, my favorite way to paint is to do a good Xenithal Prime on the mini and then use that as a map for where all of my lights and darks belong and then just kind of glaze over that and use um, some colors that are like not totally opaque, you know, kind of transparent, like maybe a mix of game color, or sorry, game uh, model color and like um, Vallejo model air and game ink and stuff like that. And then I'll work my way up to the more opaque paints as I go. And just because I've been really curious about this, um, I went ahead and I grabbed some contrast paints. Um, and uh, you can see how like apprehensive I am about doing this. I'm like, do I really want to put it on there? Um, so I just wanted to see what the um, contrast paints look like over a Zenithal Prime. Cause um, what, what I was gonna do was I was gonna see how they kind of compared to doing all that painstaking, like wet blending. So I picked out the, um, the mini out of the bunch that was like kind of like my least favorite. And then I tried some of this um, like skeleton horde contrast paint over it. But um, you know, I gotta say like, I'm not, I mean, I, I don't hate it. Um, it's uh, what, I, what I was gonna do is just gonna let it dry and then go ahead and uh, dry brush it. Um, because you know, like you're, you're not supposed to mix it with other, like other types of paints. You're supposed to use like the, the Lamium medium or the, the contrast medium and like all that blah, blah, blah. But, um, but I wanted to see if I could do some wet blending with the contrast paints. So I went ahead and did that and I, um, uh, sketched in some highlights on top of the, uh, the contrast paints, but you know, like they, they do, they do a decent job. Um, like later on, you'll see that uh, by the time I'm done, you can't tell which one has the contrast paints on and which one doesn't. So yeah, just for comparison, the one on the left is contrast paints, wet blended, and uh, with um, the other Foley Hill model color, yeah, Foley Hill model color. And then the one on the right is the one that I um, did uh, a fair amount of wet blending on. So I think he looks better, but um, the contrast paints are quick and easy, pretty quick and painless. Um, but yeah, for this is just our base layer anyways, but but uh, just for comparison, just so you can see my experiment. And I'm gonna use the same palette to do uh, wood too. Well, specifically the uh, Foley Hill model color wood grain. It makes a really nice looking wood. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use some Foley Hill model air rust. Uh, to do some rust effects, or at least the kind of base layer for some rust effects. Um, again, like the the model layer, you know, it's not it's not totally opaque. It's it's kind of like a little bit see through. So when I just br uh, brush it on with the paintbrush, it's still going to preserve that um, Zenithal Prime, so I can see where all of my lights and darks are on these guys but I am gonna kind of sketch in um, some more darker colors 
some kind of darker rust on the bottom and then lighter looking rust on the tops. But this whole time when I'm doing stuff with the wet palette, I'm, I'm doing my best to um, blend things together and get some general tone and even some shadows in. Um, but it, this isn't like the finished paint job. This is kind of like the base layer for color. Um, the, the Zenithal uh, paint job is kind of more of like a value sketch. Just tells me where the, all the lights and darks need to be. And then this is kind of like glazing on color on top of that. And I, I do want to, to keep my shadows nice and dark, but I'm not really gonna worry about like highlights and things like that, cause those are gonna get kind of um, bleached out and like coffee stained. So I'm gonna have to go back in later and do uh, highlights and things like that. But I can, I can definitely put in shadows with the wet palette and with this, this first step. And same thing with the reds, uh, wash, rinse, repeat. Uh, so this is Vallejo Game Ink Red. And uh, I'm just gonna do the same thing, just gonna kind of glaze on a layer and uh, as I go on, I'm gonna put in my shadows too. So I don't want my shadows to look black unless they're in like deep, deep recessed shadows. Cause it, it sort of makes them look like a hole or something like a black hole on the miniature. So I want my, um, my highlights to be nice and saturated red. But as I get down into my shadows, I'm gonna start putting in some uh, some kind of more like brownish red. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna use some more of that gaming uh, sepia, my uh, favorite color. And then I'm just gonna kind of uh, sketch in shadows as I go on around the, um, or around the cape and uh, everywhere that I want to be red, you know, I want it to be nice and saturated, so I'll, I'll probably go around and glaze things on, or glaze on color until I'm satisfied with how like deep red it is. Because um, one of the things I hate about painting red is that if you try and put in highlights and then you mix in like white, or if you, you mix in other colors, it looks pink. So, um, so I want my shadows to be like a nice, deep, dark, um, kind of sanguine red. And then when I do my highlights later, then, uh, then I, I want them to be like, a, you know, just bright, saturated, like fresh blood red. So now that my wet blending layer on the bones is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a little bit of um, edge highlighting just to bring them back out to kind of make them pop. And, um, but yeah, I mean, these guys, like they're just like screaming to be like edge highlighted because they just have so much detail in their little bones, you know, and it just really makes the paint job pop out when you have those high contrast, high key, uh, high contrast colors, like bright red, bright white, you know, like the, it, um, it really makes the thing, makes the, uh, the paint job pop. And if I have a really bony boy, uh, like this guy, then I'm just gonna go, ar go around and do a little bit of dry brushing. But uh, I'm using a, a makeup brush, and it just, it has very, very soft bristles, and it doesn't hold a lot of paint, and I'm just using like a very light touch to go around and, and pick up my highlights. And um, you know, if I, if I use my imagination a little bit about where some of those highlights belong for for effect, <laughs> that's okay too. Like if I want to pick up more of his ribs or 
you know, some, some bones that are in shadow or whatever just to make them pop out, then, uh, then I'll do that too. Now I'm gonna go in with some Game Ink Black and uh, I'm gonna mix that with some of the other colors on the palette too, like the, uh, the sepia browns and stuff. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bases as well as um, <clears throat> uh, fur and things like that, or these, uh, these gravestones on these guys. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do some more wet blending later on the uh, the gravestones, you know, I want to I want to do a whole base layer on these guys and uh, make sure that I get everything with some. I want all of my shadows in there and some general tones, some general color before I put away the wet palette and just uh, make sure that everything's nice and blended and uh, have smooth, creamy blends. So uh, now I'm gonna go in while the uh, the gravestones are still a little wet and I'm gonna go ahead and wet blend some colors on the gravestones. Uh, so yeah, like they're, they just have that kind of um, game ink black on there for like a base color. And then I want that in the shadows. I want that in the deepest, darkest, recessed shadows. And uh, I do want it, like I want the bases nice and dark. Like I've been going for kind of like a scorched earth look for all of my minis lately because they all just kind of fit in together, you know, and like they they don't look out of place anywhere I put them, like whether they're in a dungeon or a tavern or, you know, whatever, like whatever I'm using them for, like D&D, Frostgrave, uh, Warcry or, or whatever. Um, but so for the, the stone, I want to just kind of blend it together on there and like kind of mix colors as I go. So like I start out with the brush kind of loaded up with paint and then I'm just gonna um, sort of mix colors as I go and then try and get some, some highlights in some places and then uh, get some shadows into others. But um, I'm just gonna, you know, use the, the two colors and blend them together and, and mix them as I go. But this is when I'm starting to use the more opaque colors as I go on. Like the game color, Stonewall, Stonewall Gray is a, is a pretty opaque color. And it's more of like a heavy body than anything else that I've been using so far. And uh, so yeah, most of the paints that I'm going to be using from like now on are going to be more like heavy body, more opaque acrylics. And uh, I'm gonna use that same color to do some dry brushing on the bases. And um, I'm kind of doing this like an assembly line a little bit. Like I'll, I'll do the base on one guy and then let that dry a little bit, move on to the next guy, let that guy dry a little bit, you know, and then so on and so forth. So yeah, these, these um, the bases are, are mostly dry. I'm not really, like blending the colors anymore. Like dry brushing, your, your paints kind of have to be dry to like dry brush. So <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna go around and, and dry brush the, uh, the bases and get some of that gray back in there. Tone down the black a little bit. So one little thing about dry brushing, um, when, you're, when you're dry brushing, start with your like highest um, highlights first and then work your way down um, because you'll work more of the paint out of the brush as you go. So you, you know, you want your highest highlights to stand out because that's where the sun is hitting. And then like with things like this, where it's like a high key, high contrast highlight, it really draws your eye in. So you have to be kind of gentle and sparing with like a white, you know, on a black because it's really gonna take your eye away from the miniature. So now I'm gonna go in with some game color Rojo Sanguine uh, Bloody Red 
and um, it's, you know, again, it's just like a nice opaque, uh, really saturated kind of blood, blood red. And um, yeah, you can see on these guys, the, um, the, the inks, you get like coffee staining. And then the, uh, when, you're, when, you, when you have your highlights, the highlights look like bleached out. So um, it can be good like with the combination of the, uh, the zenithal, like you, you're, where your darkest shadows are like black, um, and then your, your lightest lights are white. It just helps to kind of go in there and like redefine them a little bit. And um, yeah, you know, again, like I'm just kind of using that as a map to where those, uh, those highlights belong. And uh, yeah, I'm using like a little teeny tiny detail brush to just go in there and kind of etch highlight and um, make sure to get rid of the coffee staining and just uh, bump up the, the saturation of that red anywhere that's not in a shadow because I want those to be my highlights. I want the, the blood red to be like my highest highlight. And if somebody has a lot of cape, then I'm just gonna go around and, uh, and dry brush it just to get you know all of it at once and make sure that everything is nice and blood red and saturated. Keep my shadows, but I want my highlights nice and deep red. So yeah, I'm gonna put away the wet palette and uh, mostly gonna be like dry brushing or, or using just really opaque paints from here on out. So uh, so yeah, I'm uh, one of the things that I do last or I make sure that I don't contaminate other paints with it is uh, metallic colors. Like uh, if you put them on your wet palette, it's just, it's really easy to like contaminate every single paint on the wet palette and make it into a metallic paint. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start doing my, uh, my rust effects and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go around and dry brush the, um, I've got some Citadel um, bolt gun metal and, uh, and I'm gonna go around and do some kind of metallic like highlights with that. And, but you know, still using the, the airbrush layer to kind of tell me where the, uh, the actual reflective metal belongs. And I do want these guys to look nice and rusty. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna go around and get all the places that, that need to be highlighted with um, reflective metallic metal. And then um, I also have another uh, Citadel paint that I wanted to experiment with, which is Typhus Corrosion, and uh, supposedly it just it builds up rust effects. It has like some uh, like very fine grit, kind of like sand in it or something like that. So uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do something with that later. But you can see my uh, I'm I'm doing the dry brush and the edge highlighting. So now I'm going to put on some of this uh, Typhus Corrosion, which is a, a technical paint. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a really crapped out dry brush and then uh, I'm going to take a lot of it off and I'm going to kind of stipple it on. I'm just going to use the, the messed up bristles to get me some kind of messed up looking um, rust effects or, or kind of like natural looking. So yeah, just gonna go around and kind of push that on and do the same thing on the weapons and armor and uh, uh, just keep building up rust effects. And uh, I'm going to use a little bit of some P3 Bogren Brown to uh, do some more uh, dry brushing. 
So I'm gonna use this both to get like wood, um, like on the back of this guy's shield. And uh, I'm also gonna use it to do a little bit of uh, like edge highlighting kind of um, crack stuff on the leather. So yeah, just really like dry brush of this. Don't wanna put on too much, just a, a nice little highlight for the wood. And then uh, same thing with, um, with little leather straps. But um, I feel like it's pretty important if you're doing metallic metals that they need to be in places where they're actually going to be reflective. Like um, metal that's in shadow, it, it, it looks dark. You know, it doesn't look like uh, shiny. It has to be in the light for it to actually be like reflective. So yeah, I just, I think that's important. And to do my very last metallic highlights, I'm gonna use some of this Vallejo Model Air aluminum, which is like the most high key uh, silver kind of color that I've ever seen. But it's, it goes on like super, super smooth and a little bit goes a long way. Um, I just wanna make it look like these guys, their weapons and stuff are not completely rusted junk that they are sharp and they can do damage and uh, just pick up some of those tippy top um, reflective highlights. So yeah, I'm just gonna go around and do a little bit of edge highlighting with that. But yeah, a little bit goes a long way. And uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more rust effects um, I actually got this whole set of Vallejo Model Air um, rust effects from like Hobby Lobby. It was on, or I got it with a 40% off coupon and it was like $24 or something. But it just comes with all kinds of different kind of rust, cool looking rust colors. So I wanted to play with that. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of go in and uh, I wanna just, you know, put some more kind of dark deep dark browns and like the shadows and stuff to like to really just kind of make those edges pop. And um, yeah, I, I put it on a little bit thick, like what you can do is you can, um, if, you, if you do the same thing, if you put it on like really thick, just um, take, a, a, take a, some of the paint off, you know, and just dab it off and then and, uh, take like a little bit of water or if you're a paint licker, just like stick it in your mouth and then just dab off a little bit and then kind of pull it inwards and that'll that'll sort of help it uh, settle in the recess a little bit. And down to the finish line, um, I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush a little bit more of the game color Stonewall Gray onto my uh, my black fur. And uh, I don't care if it looks choppy, you know, at this point, like I'll, I'll use a cracked out dry brush. It might even add something to it if the fur looks really choppy. Like I, I use the, uh, the makeup brush when I want a really smooth dry brush, and then I'll use a really cracked out dry brush when I want to get like a rough looking kind of texture. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint all my rooms black. Um, I like uh, P3 Damar Black. Uh, I use it straight out of the pot. It's nice and opaque and matte and uh, has a pretty smooth finish. All right, that's the end of it. Um, really trying to, trying to uh, edit these down a little bit shorter. My uh, my last video was like 45 minutes. My last painting video was 45 minutes. The one before that was like an hour. 
So I understand that you guys don't want to watch like painting movies, but uh, but yeah, this is you know it's a kind of complicated paint job. Not too bad, you know. Still, like only took like a few hours to do. And uh, yeah, you know, so about the Vallejo Model Air, the little background thing, the um, the like clouds in the background, I did that with the um, with the Model Air. So you can totally use it to do like. Um, you know, a, a matte painting or whatever for your backdrop. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I can think of a few more things to keep going with these guys, like maybe do some designs on their shield that looks like it's peeling off, or do some like OSL kind of stuff, like glowing eyeballs, uh, glowing feet, like where they're coming out of the ground or something like that. But, um, but I really like these guys. I think they look awesome. And uh, I need them for Frost Bridge so that I can do Dark Alchemy Part 2. Didn't have enough skeletons to go around. So now I have more skeletons. And they look awesome. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, welcome to all my new subscribers. And uh, yeah, next, next time I think it's going to be Dark Alchemy Part 2 and you're going to see these guys again. But yeah, um, take care of yourselves until the next time I see you.